I would also ask uh, uh, several other people to join me up here uh, at the panel. We, we were planning to have a panel set up here, so up here, then uh, Professor Kowalczuk and uh, Mr. Luke Palman. And I think that should be enough up here. Um, the way we were uh, planning to have this uh, round table, we, we don't have a big round table, at least not big enough for all of us. But uh, I would say that we have a, a panel group up here. We can start the discussion, and then I would uh, most certainly suggest, and I expect that you will uh, uh, take that, I would suggest that you all participate in the discussion. I would very much be interested in hearing your opinions, uh, hearing if uh, you have learned something uh, during these two days, what your uh, views of the trends in the area are, and so on. So uh, let me just give a very short introduction. Um, in the past, in in the past two days, we have heard uh, a number of presentations. I think about uh, 25 projects were presented. And um, uh, they were coming from very different points of view. They were coming from different countries uh, with different approaches, talking about different problems, materials. Uh, so in my opinion, uh, this is exactly what we wanted to achieve. And I hope it was informative to you as well. Uh, there are some, in my opinion, uh, conclusions that we can make. We can see that uh, there is substantial investment in this area, just from the sheer number of projects. My estimate is that the value of the projects presented here during these two days is somewhere between 80 and 100 million euros, uh, which I think is uh, quite interesting. We can also see that there is a lot of work on material development. Uh, some materials are developed, I would say, pretty finally, but there is still ongoing work. Uh, and there is also a lot of work on application development. Uh, that's, I think, also a, an important conclusion. Uh, in many of the presentations, I had a feeling there were common points. Uh, perhaps the common points were on the materials. I think we saw most of the uh, contributions talk about uh, PLA, PHA, agriculture, packaging. Uh, I think these were the common points. Uh, and I, I hope that uh, it was possible for you to find some synergies or possibly points of cooperation that you might have between projects. Uh, there might be complementary knowledge between the projects. Uh, there might be technology available that uh, somebody might need and somebody else has, or perhaps uh, cooperation on methods. Uh, you, will, you will have to uh, tell me about that. Something that I uh, observed, uh, which maybe uh, says, uh, goes against what I said yesterday in the beginning, is that in Central Europe, uh, we can <coughs> say there is quite some activity. Uh, there is certainly development activity, and I hope that this will, in the future, translate into results, <coughs> and probably also into commercial activity and success. Personally, I find it interesting that uh, perhaps some things were missing from our presentations. I haven't noticed uh, any mention of uh, materials that are also biodegradable, like uh, polycaprolactone, polyvinyl alcohol. Um, I just thought that was interesting. I didn't hear anything about any biopolyethylene or something like that. Uh, but that is how things uh, develop. I just find it uh, rather interesting. One thing that we are particularly interested within our project, Plistis, is what the limits are that can stop the penetration of biodegradable materials in the markets, particularly Central European markets. And I think um, from what I've heard, my feeling is 
that perhaps uh, we could say it is somehow transferred into production. I see a lot of potential that will need to be transferred into production to commercial use. Just uh, some examples, there was a lot of talk of mulch film, then twine, packaging, that is in some development phase and will need to move onwards. Uh, then there's a question if production uh, can be based on some of the work that is going on. Uh, for example, there is no PHA production in Europe. I know that. There is a lot of work on it, a lot of investment, no production. And something that uh, I also personally believe might be a limitation to the development of the use of these materials is uh, the sort of lack of attention to the end of life options, to the waste management, to composting, because uh, through those options, we can actually really use the full potential of these materials. So this is my view of what was going on in the past two days. And I would uh, perhaps first ask the panel to give your opinion and then open a full discussion. So, please, who will start? <coughs> May it work? Uh, if you don't mind, uh, uh, after two days of the hard work, I would like to propose you some uh, gymnastic. Uh, we uh, ask you uh, to fill the questionnaires. Some of you uh, already done it. However, uh, from the all around 60 participants of that conference, now on the, uh, on the audience there are uh, approximately 30 people. So if you don't mind, if I ask now those who rep are representatives of research development and universities to raise their hands. How many of you are from research development and universities? Okay, this is around 14 people. How many of you are from the small and medium-sized enterprises? Around nine. How many of you are from the uh, large companies? And from the other uh, organizations? Okay, <clears throat> so I think that half of us are from research and half of us are from industry. Uh, that means that uh, our uh, current, let's say, uh, group is quite representative. Uh, well, uh, to go with you around the, the points which we have already put to this questionnaire, uh, it will be a little bit borrowing and perhaps this uh, gymnastic would be too long. So if I may uh, summarize it, if you agree, Andre, uh, to just make for us the uh, discussion uh, at the beginning uh, quite concentrated with the main subject, to do it also via votation very simply. I ask now uh, regarding polylactite uh, for the eventual applications in the various listed on this questionnaire orders. Uh, just simply vote uh, by raising the hand saying if your opinion is that polylactite would be a good candidate for production of the rigid packages. How many of you agree with that? Thank you. What about the flexible packages from polylactide? It's only two. What about foam packages? What about films? What about coatings on paper? Mulch films. Is a you agree with polylactide for the mulch films? Thank you. <laughs> One, two, three, four. 
And for, uh, for the other purposes, I do not ask. Because what about the PHB or PHA in general, let's say? For the rigid packages, for flexible packages, for foam packages, films, coated paper, mulch films, well, uh, please, uh, Marina, be prepared, starch-based materials. <laughs> what about rigid packages? Are you for? Yes. <laughs> At least two. Flexible packages. Foamed packages. <laughs> Films. Coated paper. and mulch films. Okay. I think that we can skip the rest because polycaprolactone was not rather uh, pre presented very briefly here. Uh, uh, the remaining uh, other polymers uh, for us, uh, perhaps, uh, uh, this is something what we can get for the questionnaires already we have done. Uh, so I would like to thank all of you for your help just to define where we are, uh, just looking on the material basis for the compostable polymers which are currently offered on the market. Uh, the uh, uh, result which we get from that population uh, after this short uh, gym lesson means that we can agree that uh, there is the wide opportunity for the now existing polymeric materials to be used in these areas of applications and really during these two days uh, the nice applications have been uh, presented. So uh, I will stop at that moment and Andre, uh, uh, perhaps the, the other panelists would, would like to come. Yeah, no, if, I, if I may, I just... Uh I think that it was very interesting to see uh, uh, our initial lecture that we had yesterday on the trends uh, by uh, EU funds and how the materials were uh, um, more or less financed. And, uh, and I think our project in this can be uh, of help in trying to make sure the results don't get lost, which is often what happens uh, with uh, public funds, and that's, that's a pity. And, uh, and I think also that... Um, what, uh, what, we, what was good to see, uh, uh, at least from the industry perspective, is um, to see that more and more industries uh, involved with the, with, with, the, with the academics and with the university, and this should be uh, something in continuous, uh, something in which we should uh, continue to engage more and more, at least from the industry side, uh, because it, I think it's a cooperation that allows, uh, as you said, uh, to make sure that the results uh, of uh, undertaken by research activities can find a place in the market. Um, so these two, mo these two words need to die to, to talk constantly and align themselves more and more. And, uh, and I also think that it's uh, a missing point for me, at least, uh, was uh, the, the fact that when we talk about bioplastic, we don't focus too much. I mean, it's, uh, it's not often that we see how important it is to think about the end of life, because it's only by thinking about the end of life that you're able to really see the benefit for the whole system. And it's through also waste management practice that you improve and, uh, and that you're able to also um, increase the use of bioplastic and see the benefits of it. So that's... Uh, and to add a little bit on this, uh I think we saw in the several presentations a real thematic-based approach, which is also very interesting because every one of you thought about concrete problems. End users have problems. They don't get rid of the waste, or the waste is in the sea, 
when we talk about leaderships, um, or we have problems uh, concerning the hospitals uh, or other uh, thematic areas, events. So I think by focusing on uh, thematic issues and places and common uh, areas where a certain problem is really expressed, we're able to take away the debate from the cost issues. Because yeah. if we say, okay, bioplastics, then somebody says, okay, plastic, bioplastics, it's three times more expensive, so end the discussion, go back to your laboratories and have your toys. Yeah. But if we say, okay, here we have a clear area, we have a clear problem, we are supported by some legal frameworks, and we have a certain critical mass that allows us to set up a systematic approach. This is also what Novamon said today. Yeah, we have to focus on systemic approaches. And systemic approaches we are able to create when we can find partners in cooperation. And I think these two days have shown that each of us is doing something in this area, but we can, for the next days, the next weeks, the next months and years, find new partners in cooperation to create these systemic approaches around our organizations. And this is really an added value, I think, of this conference. Thank you. Uh, since we all gave our own opinion, I would invite uh, the audience, all of you participants, to <coughs> perhaps give your impression, give your comments, so that we can really start a discussion. I hope you don't all agree. <laughs> yeah. well, I think I'm in this field uh, working now since uh, 1976. Uh, this was a time where biopolymers, uh, I, I never will forget my first lecture on, on, in this field, it was in Vienna. And one of the professors of, uh, in Vienna stood up and said, oh, we heard a nice lecture from a young guy here. But obviously, nobody told him that polyesters are made from oil. So uh, for me, uh, being here now and to have, uh, have an insight into the development of bioplastics during the last more than 30 years, I have to say it's a success that I see, a success that came up especially in the last three or four years. Uh, when I think how much we have fighted uh, within uh, the framework of IMCF Toledo to place biopolymers internationally, and very often we have been misunderstood because people didn't even know what that means. Or when I go back to the first conferences on biopolymers, on uh, defining what is biodegradability, uh, and uh, it was claimed that PVC should be in the list of uh, biodegradables uh, during that time. I think looking to what we can see now, we see a total change. And I think not only in the scientific community, but also in, in, in the, uh, uh, with the people outside. Uh, this was a long process. Uh, it took a lot of time. But I'm very happy to see uh, that uh, in, in this conference now uh, that things have totally changed in minds and in reality. Uh, to add on this, I've seen in the presentations a lot of uh, um, uh, a lot of information and, and underlining the issue of this uh, uh, time-specific uh, <coughs> degradation processes and context-based approach. This is very important because it means that we really feel the needs of our future clients. Uh, and this is also what Plastis is about, creating these value change, <coughs> thinking ahead uh, towards the final client, but also thinking about what is coming in between. So we think about the uh, retailers, we think about the logistic processes, we think about um, producers in the food sector, medical sector, yeah, in other sectors, those who really need our applications or also want to use our products, <coughs> our products, to create new market propositions. And they have to be sure that there are no barriers 
in between, because otherwise the risk will be too high to enter in this kind of difficult and costly process. And this is, for me, also one of the questions. Where do you, as experts in the field, feel that there still are some challenges to be taken? Some of you have rose these challenges during their presentations, but if we make like this kind of uh, summary uh, at the end of this conference, where are the, the main challenges in bioplastics to really enter into this Central European market with new applications? Ivan, it's you would like to answer. <coughs> If I may, Andre, because this was me who just presented <laughs> uh, uh, the, the information uh, which some of uh, uh, you probably remember. Castle Project, indeed, in my opinion, was the demonstration of the total chain from the producer of the biodegradable plastic till the composting uh, and even uh, assessment of the quality of the compost with all the important elements of this chain inside, especially the information, uh, the, uh, the, let's say, uh, legislation, <coughs> the, the processing, and so on and so on. So uh, uh, we agree, I think, with you that such a castle project should be uh, started in the uh, many places in our, uh, in our Central European and not only in the European countries just to demonstrate that now having on the market the materials which are suitable for that purposes, we can demonstrate that they really function and work for the process which were, were particularly designed. However, there are also some other applications which have been presented uh, during these two days for me, some of them are very uh, new, some of them are very niche, but very important. Let me come back to the presentation of ESA with this mask, which are produced from the polylactide of the various, let's say, degree of processing. This was the part in the form of the material which should absorb the dust. This was a part which was processed because somebody should put it on, on the face. So it means, there are also the elements which can degrade with the various rate because this is the different relation between their weight and surfaces. So there are several such a products which are much more advanced than the simple, let's say, bag. So uh, this is also the opportunity to look for such a niche areas for all of us and to answer the question whether we are able to go with that direction also. So in summary, uh, I think we agree that the problem of the uh, biodegradable polymers for the, let's say, generally environmental applications in, in the, is indeed a social problem which should be uh, resolved on the model castle projects uh, which were ever they could be introduced in the, in the cities uh, of Europe. And also it offers the new opportunities in these areas where uh, really they have the additional benefits like that one I have mentioned. If I can just make a comment on the Castle project, I think the Castle project is now approximately 10 years uh, away already. So I agree, uh, there's probably time for a 
Newcastle project, but on the other hand, I think we have a Italy project uh, that we can all observe uh, what is happening in Italy where something similar to a castle project has been implemented nationwide. So I think that will be also very interesting. Also, I hope that some uh, analysis will come from it so we will see uh, how it actually is working. And we submitted in the last live class program a proposal in Spain. So, and Nova Mont is participating. Uh, we hope we succeed in the obtention of the project because uh, the legislation in Spain is banning um, the plastic bags. So, uh, next year, a high percentage of these bags should be biodegradable. Nevertheless, in almost all Spain, we don't have separate collection of the organic waste. So uh, we need a demonstration that you need to do this. If not, it's useless to pay for a biodegradable bag. Yeah. So I think that it's very important to make uh, evolution uh, using, the, let's say, some catalytical steps, as I can use the chemical language. This legislation, is, which now in force in Italy, could be a catalyst of that. However, for that kind of changes, we need the infrastructure. And infrastructure means also the composting facilities, the selective uh, collection of organic waste, <coughs> and also the understanding and knowledge of the, uh, let's say, customers. This is the problem which we observe in Poland, for example, where uh, the, uh, one of the big uh, chain of supermarkets introduced the compostable bags and they connected it with the, some kind of the information printed to the uh, public people saying that they produce the safe carbon dioxide. So to understand uh, for the people what is the difference between the old carbon and the new carbon, this is very uh, sophisticated. Uh, during uh, one of the presentations uh, here, uh, I saw the excellent one slide summary to understand bio-based and biodegradable polymers in the very, very, uh, very simple but very communicative way. I think that if the author is on the audience uh, and allowed uh, the, uh, all of us to use that to uh, very easily to inform the non-specialist what is the real goal of that materials we are working on, this is important. As you remember, Castle Project start the education of the children because the children are the easiest teachers of their parents. Uh, when they, uh, and they accept usually the environmental issues much better. So there are also uh, the, 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 the actions like that taken, for example, on Silesia, where I am located in Poland, that we talk with the children from the uh, uh, schools, from the high schools, just to discuss them, to inform them, uh, to let them know uh, what is going on in this area. It helps because uh, that uh, enables pe uh, people which are not the specialists in that kind of particular things uh, to, to understand the philosophy of that. Uh, the reactions of the changing of the law are various. Some people uh, usually can say that they are not happy. Uh, we understand that. However, I think that the important uh, problem, connect, the social problem connected with these new technologies is to be environmentally and also uh, acceptable by people. People should accept this because if they accept this, this, they even agree to pay more for the things which they know they are better. Uh, this is the, the chance for the real development. First of all, I would not like to deceive uh, Andre Kran with his hopes about Italy, but you know, <laughs> it's a complicated country, our country. We tend to have laws before having the infrastructures that allow you to apply those laws, so we are a difficult country anyway. <laughs> 
But uh, according to what uh, um, Luke was asking before, uh, uh, specific topics where we should still uh, uh, make some reasonings, etc. Uh, for example, uh, of course, for packaging uh, and uh, things like that, large volumes, uh, compostability is the important thing. I have some problems when I hear people talking about uh, applications in agriculture and still talking uh, in a rather mixed way about biodegradability or compostability. So I think that for the agricultural applications, the important things uh, would be to avoid having to take those things off the field, like uh, mulching films or any other things that you use in agriculture, and to have a, a correct timing of the degradation rate in soil, I suppose, uh, to the time of the use of those items. So when I hear people talking about uh, compostability of that kind of materials, it leaves me a little bit uh, confused, and I think it is also confusing for potential users. So I think that in that kind of applications, there still is a need for some clarifications and some uh, specific, better specifications. Other challenges? Yep. I think um, <coughs> you heard Mike. about um, biodegradability. Uh, we heard about biodegradability, compostability, but I think also uh, recycling of biopolymers should become an issue in the future, or maybe an opportunity for further development, especially regarding quality. Um, of the materials. So, thank you. May I have a short comment? Sure. Uh, well, uh, I think that uh, biodegradable polymers, as you know, have the advent all the advantages of the classical one, plus that that they are biodegradable. So means that I agree with you that in that kind of applications, when they can be reprocessed, it of course uh, is possible and acceptable. Of course, with all the consequences which we have for that. It means uh, that the, if it will be simple mechanical recycling, that the quality of that material after the second processing will be lower, but perhaps enough for the uh, another kind of application. So I think there is no objection uh, against that, that if possible, they can be reused <coughs> on, on that way, because this is possible. Uh, what for me is, in connection to that, uh, especially uh, important, it was connected with the application of some of these materials for uh, anaerobic uh, degradation and possibility to production of the biogas which gives another opportunity. This is especially important for the application of these materials in the hospitals, where you have the material with the contact of blood, it is not allowed to compost it. However, it can be uh, uh, just disposed in that kind of the uh, anaerobic degradation, where you can just uh, produce uh, the energy and uh, use it even at the hospital where this kind of materials can be used. So these are these advantages which we know and, uh, in my opinion, are the, uh, the positive aspects. You have, in part, anticipated my comment. I was just referring that uh, there was just few inputs on anaerobic digestion, while, in my opinion, it should be more deeply addressed, since, at least in Italy, there is not that huge market for compost. I mean, you go in composting, but then you have a huge amount of compost, which is not always so easy to, to place to the farmer even because of the previous negative experience. And especially for my experience, sometimes when we get the compost for doing tests, it's very easy to find a piece of glass or a piece of plastic in it. So many composting facilities 
are not really producing a good quality of compost and this is uh, a real problem for using the compost, while the biogas, of course, is something that any municipalities can use. And maybe in the future we should uh, focus more attention on the disposal of the biodegradable in anaerobic digestion for biogas than what we do now that we mostly think just about composting and production of compost. It's just a comment. I have, I have a short, I would like to say, personal comment. First of all, I'm newcomer in this kind of society, for, and I would wish to, to thank to Andrzej Chan particularly for the invitation to come here. And I learned a lot. Uh, I'm by a temperament, and by education, I am a physical chemist. But really, I uh, learned a lot, and uh, maybe this 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 meeting because of the role i am playing in the the, the, the uh, biopol project give me short uh, broader perspective so thank you <laughs> for 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 the invitation thank you. Well, I think uh, biogas is one option, but if you look into PHAs, uh, PHAs are quite simply uh, to hydrolyze, and then you come to uh, chiral uh, chemical compounds, 3-hydroxybutyrate, uh, 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 valerate, and so on, a family in total of more than 100 uh, uh, stereochemically pure substrates. And I think uh, you should also think about the possibilities to use these things uh, in the future for chiral synthesis, because that's a secondary raw material of a very, very high value. Uh, just as an example, if you start from 3-hydroxybutyrate, uh, uh, it might be a building block uh, for building up uh, really high potential uh, uh, antibiotics that can hardly be made by fermentation. Uh, if you agree only, <coughs> Gerard, just because uh, you are a biochemist and some of us are chemists. <coughs> we in chemistry uh, just use the name of 3-hydroxybutyric acid for 3-hydroxybutyrate, which for us is usually connected with ester of all the, with the salt. But uh, we know that, that uh, you are perfectly right that this is the chiral uh, starting uh, monomer for the, uh, not only monomer, the, the chemical for the various useful synthesis and indeed uh, this is, this is a kind of the, let's say, uh, of the recycling which we connect the monomer recycling. I would like just to add something about the question of anaerobic digestion. I will say that we have enough technology now for more than anaerobic digestion for biogas to go directly to biomethane. Because there's a technology, uh, this is possible to realize some uh, pile plants and uh, um, obtaining from anaerobic digestion directly biomethane is an added value for a country like Italy that we have a very well developed net and so this, that gives us a very high value. We try to submit a Life Plus project with uh, trying to realize a pilot in that sense, and so we can, and uh, um, on the ways that we want to analyze for produce biomethane, we include also the, the possibility to degrade the bio, bioplastics. Perhaps to uh, ask a question again of all of you. Uh, in the first presentation yesterday, we heard that certain areas seem to be missing from all the projects that are going on. And I think one of them mentioned was, for example, blending. Do you see an opportunity in this? Uh, do you see that this might be missing? Okay, good. <laughs> well, 
Well, I think blending could be an excellent uh, possibility uh, for the future. Uh, and it's really, uh, it's a shame uh, looking through all the EU projects in that field. I could not find a simple one uh, on blending of these polymers. And I think there is not enough knowledge. I know that, for example, even in your labs, you have a lot of knowledge in this field. But this is not common to, uh, to the European uh, community. And I think uh, this might be uh, a possibility to launch a project uh, uh, to Brussels because that's really a niche where nothing has been done in the past. Under the condition, uh, you agree, Gerard, that it will be the blending with the polymers which are the biodegradable. Because there are some works which you can observe when the people mix non-degradable polymers with biodegradable polymers. And then, uh, and then there are also some confusions in this area. So, uh, and discussion. Um, only one comment. Some of the projects I mentioned yesterday uh, are based on blends of commercial uh, biopolymers. We, in our institute, we don't uh, work on the chemistry, so we we don't produce new polymers but we work on ex uh, reactive extrusion, blend of polymers, and modification. So, and I know other uh, projects at European level and national level that uh, work on blends of different biopolymers. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So probably it's not in the title, but um, in the concept of the project or in the development of the project, the um, compounding of blends of different polymers, it's uh, a real work in the project. Yeah, Gerard, thanks for comment. Uh, I think you are not quite right that uh, there are not, not too many people who know about blending, it's just uh, somehow it happened that only few people are connected with the uh, topic of biodegradable plastics because generally blending uh, blending is uh, quite uh, spread up and uh, between material scientists working in polymer science there is the blending is the most popular most famous mo most uh, uh, used uh, method the only point is that uh, okay uh, i am a material scientist i don't care whether i blend uh, biodegradable plastics, or I blend uh, electroconductive plastics, or I, I blend rubbers. Because the principles are the same. Principles are the same, and I can use the same principles, or slightly modified principles, to blend the rubbers, and the PHB with PLA. More or less. Of course, you have to, you have to find uh, you have to have some uh, good idea then uh, how, to, uh, how to solve the details. But the general principle is the same, and, and this, this, uh, this, is a problem, this is a problem that somehow, uh, somehow these people who are experts in blending, they are not uh, attracted, or I don't know what, they, they, are simply, uh, they didn't overlap to, to this region of, of uh, biodegradable plastics. Perhaps I would add one more thing here, uh, not just blending, but also let's say additives, uh, master batches, and so on. Uh, for most biodegradable materials, bioplastics, uh, there's a severe limitation in these. So that is also something probably we will need to develop looking at serious applications. If you agree, Andre, uh, half of us here are from industry. And perhaps it would be a good opportunity if we can hear those who are from, let's say, research and development, what, in your opinion, are uh, the critical uh, problems in the area of biodegradable polymers, which, from your experience, should be addressed uh, to research people? I mean, do you have uh, any suggestions what are the uh, areas where uh, we, we, we could be more useful for you? Hello, I am one of the work package uh, four within the Splasticia project. Uh, my name is Barbara Tischler from Slopak. And uh, the main problem which uh, we see now uh, is that um, uh, 
blending materials goes technologically. It's possible, the processing is possible. Uh, so if you look at just on the technical side, it's okay. But you see, I think uh, we should also look at uh, from the design side because uh, once you blend these materials, uh, then uh, from the waste packaging management uh, company where I come from, you cannot uh, separate them, you can just incinerate them. And uh, that is why it is uh, really important uh, that when discussing eco-design and uh, blending of materials together, uh, this is maybe combined. I don't think if I was clear, but I'm sure the work package four of the Plastis project will clear this out. Thank you. Perhaps an important thing here was what uh, Maida commented, blending biodegradable materials, which offers another option as well. Are there any voices from industry, please? <laughs> you are not from industry. <laughs> Still, one comment uh, regarding blending and regarding the, uh, the funding from the European Union. The problem is that, uh, okay, uh, European Union, these uh, frameworks program are based, programs are, ba are aimed uh, mainly to basic research. As soon as you start to, play, to suggest something like blending, they immediately tell you that, okay, this already applied research and companies should, who, who are interested should finance that. That is really difficult to, well, uh, not really difficult, but it is much more difficult to get, uh, get uh, support from uh, these uh, framework programs uh, for blending than for, uh, for example, the quite new synthesis of, or, or synthesis of, of PHB or, or PLA or whatever. Really, believe me that uh, the, sometimes we, we, the, our, our projects were simply refused. Uh, you know very well that we, uh, within uh, Waypol, we developed or you developed, I was assisting, uh, that uh, you developed the, the technology for producing PHB. As soon as we came to the, uh, to the demonstration part, we need some uh, further support to, to demonstrate that it is possible in a larger scale, they said, okay, this is not, uh, not the uh, topic for supporting from the European Union framework program because they, they are not supporting the, the, uh, the demonstration. They, they are not supporting, this should be su supplied by the industry. They are supported by industry, not by, uh, by this uh, fund of uh, European Union. So, so then the question is, when industry should come in and is industry ready to come in at that moment? Or is the risk still too high? I have two things to, to say. To, to give you an answer on it, this is a CIP program, which uh, gave funds only for demonstration and going to the market. So if you have a good idea, a good solution, but quick to go to the market, you can have some money for that. 50% of the money, because it's quite exclusively given for SMEs or companies. So this is a recent program, but it is really useful in this field. Okay? It, it exists, <coughs> in fact. What I, I, I'm not from the industry, I am from the services to the industry. I think I have heard lots of things on biodegradation and compostability. I think there is a, a, a real trouble with the words we used. For me, the EN 13432 is not compostability, it's only biodegradability plus disintegration. It's not the same. We can only speak about compostability if we are able to test the material into composting plants yeah. or in inside uh, soils. This is very important because for me it's, uh, it's very bad for the image of the product we talk about or, or 
along these two days. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? From my consumer point of view, and because I was an expert at the re regulatory level in France, uh, I think that plastics in general have a very bad image in the public. So one of uh, the actions that could be undertaken is not to speak about bioplastic but or biosources sourced plastic mm -hmm. but to things about biomaterials or bio I, I don't know what you have to imagine very clearly what will be the next words new words on this kind of material semantic <laughs> point of view. we have to differ and at least I, I will um, I would um, say that if we make bioplastic and if we use bioplastic like we used uh, petroleum sources, the one, I mean with additives, with lots of the same products, I think that the people will not accept bioplastic. We will <coughs> be very uh, we will take care on how the products, the final products, are, are made. This is very important. You know, all the big crises we have on plastics, and uh, I think the next one, not today, but uh, the day after, will be on bioplastics. Sure. This is an important issue because everybody is getting depressed. This is an important issue uh, for Work Package 4 under Plastis where we talk about the national information points, information toolkit. This was an issue raised two years ago by the consortium where we said, okay, we see a lot of uh, trash information yeah. uh, and we should, this clear, we should clear this out. This will be also an important issue for all other projects that in a certain way the whole a uh, group of uh, institutions, organizations involved in this process start to use the same words. That's true, that's true. Okay. Other companies, this is the, cha the chance you have today. You have about 14, 15 experts on the other side from the science area. Okay, yes. <coughs> Um, I learned a lot during those two days about uh, packaging because it's not my current sectors. I work on car industry. Uh, to summarize what I learned is you investigate three main uh, materials, PLA, PHA, PHB, and make a lot of research to make those, those materials uh, very eco-friendly. Um, in car industry, we used uh, today uh, materials, recycled materials, and also biocomposite materials yet on the market. And I think that if we are, if we today we use those materials, it's because they bring something else than any friendly characteristics. Uh, you know, in, in bumpers, for example, we use 30% of uh, recycled polypropylene. Uh, in the internal trim of the, of the cars, we used a lot of natural fibers. It's because uh, recycled polypropylene is cheaper. It's because natural fibers is lighter. And I think that if we want industrial to use those biocomposites or those bioplastics, uh, we need to bring us something else than an ecological, uh, uh, less ecological impact. That's my point of view. Any more voices from industry, potential users? <clears throat> Any other comment maybe on something else? No? If I may, one comment, Andre. <clears throat> 
Uh, I would like to refer to this Croatian presentation of you. Uh, you mentioned about the legislation systems you use based on the other countries, but do you have your own one now uh, according to the special national agreements? In Croatia? Yes. No, not yet. Not yet. And Actually, car industry is our uh, uh, main uh, main industry where where uh, these films are used. And as you have said, that's the problem that we've been facing. We have a film that would uh, that could replace uh, uh, polyethylene uh, 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 film with corrosion inhibitors, but the cost of the film it's still substantial for industry to be ready to, to pay for that. Only in certain marketing instances, uh, in production of uh, electrical cars or where the, the, the consumers are targeting, uh, targeted uh, based on uh, environmental conscious or, or uh, different way of uh, accepting uh, plastic. This this commercial uh, commercial aspect uh, can be brought to life. Otherwise, it's impossible. Yeah. But this is also an issue. Like you said, it has to be cheaper too. Uh, so, the the cases we've seen where we have some kind of common problems for common markets or niches or groups. And this is the thematic approach. I think this is the only way where we can say, okay, we focus on what you did this uh, uh, marine area, so yes, okay, litter, uh, or we focus on hospitals, or we focus on that we have really these strategic focuses that allows us uh, in a certain area to increase critical mass as quickly as possible so that we can uh, lower production costs. I totally agree with uh, what you said. Uh, I think that when you study the uses of plastics, I mean, uh, every source sees, uh, for instance, f food packaging that, that are a key point for about safety and acceptance represent quite five to ten percent maximum of the production of one packaging. Mm -hmm. So, to my mind, this is the place for bioplastics. And if we can focus, I agree, the example with uh, hospital material was also excellent. There's pla the place for some specific market. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next future for me is there. Not for, perhaps not for cars, even if uh, there are some needs. Mm -hmm. But today, some niches. Yeah. <coughs> Is there any such conclusion maybe uh, possible to be made for textiles or agriculture? I know quite a number of you focus on these uses. <laughs> I was quite too long, so now I, I need to express myself. Sorry. Uh, just to recall about agricultural plastic, that in France it was um, a research was, uh, which is uh, undertaken by the French Ministry of Agriculture on the safety of mulching film and fertile adhesives. They have, uh, they are the ministry is really anxious and want to be sure that uh, the material is composted and not disintegrated <laughs> even in the field. And uh, for me, it's the first time that I see such a procedure. The ministry asking for specific re research in one, only one area. So they've conducted this uh, research and study already? Sorry. So they've conducted this study already. Okay, this would be very interesting to uh, get
get hold of. Any other comments? I think we're nearing the last chances, so whoever wants to speak now is the chance. <laughs> uh, panelists, anything to add? No? Uh, well, in that case, perhaps uh, I would um, try to conclude this uh, roundtable discussion. I think um, we have managed to actually go through the various aspects that uh, still remain unanswered questions and that wait for us to find solutions in order to make uh, what we are working on actually really a reality, an important and integral part of everybody's life. And I believe bioplastics uh, have that future. So uh, I personally think that uh, we achieved the goals of this conference. I have to thank all of you, really, for your participation, for your presentations. I know you had to prepare them. I know you had to travel. But I sincerely hope that you're not sorry to be here. And I cannot guarantee that we will have an opportunity to meet again and try to see how we are progressing. But uh, I really hope that we will find, perhaps in cooperation with some of you on um, other projects, to perhaps follow up in this way. I think we hit, in fact, something that was missing from the conference's uh, scene that hasn't been actually done. And uh, I'm pleased that you took part of it. And thank you very much. And I can just say, I hope that we have a nice uh, view of the museum that hosted us. I would uh, finally also like to thank uh, not just uh, you for participation, but also those that really worked hard to make this event possible. Uh, and I hope we didn't use all your energy so you will be willing to help us in the future as well. So thank you very much.